Chapter 406, Coral's Return Watching the divine water increasing in size, Lu Xu enjoyed the process. It reminded him of his childhood days of saving loose change in the orphanage. Back then, sometimes the caregivers would give them some money. It was not a lot though, only small value coins of one dollar or fifty cents. Most kids would spend it right away on candies or ice cream. Only Lu Xu could hold in this urge and secretly safe kept them in his tiny iron box. He simply liked to watch as coins accumulated in the box, regardless of the total amount. From time to time, he would shake the box when other kids went to play in the yard. Its weight and the ting of coins inside offered Lu Xu a sense of security for the first time. However, living under other people's roofs could never provide true psychological security. In the orphanage, they would be punished for dirtying the wall or failing to clean the bowls. You would not even know what was right or wrong. Thus, meticulousness was the general tone. But it taught Lu Xu a lesson, that only things in his hands truly belonged to him. Then, another kid discovered Lu Xu's iron box and tried to steal his money, but ended up being beat up hard. After that, no one dared to lay a finger on his money though as a result of the fight, Lu Xu had a swollen face and a bloodied neck for half a month. Just when everyone thought Lu Xu was a miser who would never spend his money, he secretly bought a new pair of white shoes for Lu Xiaoyu during Chinese New Year. Even Lu Xu could not explain why he did it. Maybe they were fated to depend on each other. Lu Xu was pondering, it would be excellent if those people could hold the gargoyles back for a day. This way, he could consume each and every one of them. But just after he was done with the third one, Evan's team had already claimed victory. After all, many of the fighters were well experienced in combat. Everyone was exhausted at the end of the fight. Thus, Lu Xu immediately put on a tired face, pretending to look just as normal. Evan turned to Lu Xu, you killed the three gargoyles? Very good. But I killed four. Lu Xu raised his eyebrows in pity, I could have gotten four more gargoyles. When Evan was boasting about his accomplishments, he was totally unaware that Lu Xu's first reaction was absolutely not one of admiration. Instead, it was grievance. He even wanted Evan to return the gargoyles to him. But it was only a fleeting thought. There was no shortage of gargoyles in the remain anyway. Moreover, at the current moment, any practitioner inside could be battling with gargoyles and only the few pros could completely ignore those class D monsters. Someone suddenly asked, how did you wake up so many gargoyles at once? Can't you just deal with them one by one? Yes, it'd be slow, but it's much safer. A middle-aged man in the fleeing team replied, looking miserable, last night, we notice that gargoyles are slow at night. They won't be triggered even if you walk past black rocks, unless you make direct contact with them. Therefore, we decided to quickly march forward in the darkness and rest during the day, so that our efficiency of resources collection could be maximized. Lu Xu was impressed by the delicacy of the idea. But how did they get themselves into trouble? The man sighed and continued, it was a good plan. We found four broken magical weapons, and a functioning one last night. Actually, they were worth some cultivation resources. It wasn't an easy feat but after sunrise, all the gargoyles regained their alertness and we almost forgot about it. Oh. The reason was pretty clear now. It was like having fun in a minefield when all the bombs were deactivated, but then. At this moment, Meng Jingchan was walking towards Lu Xu. Since she already knew his abilities and was determined to convince him to join her ambition, she certainly needed to make some effort. But before she could get close, that pretty girl earlier had already dashed to Lu Xu's side. She said in English, Thank you. Thank you very much. I couldn't imagine what might have happened had you not made your first move just now. My name is Coral. Lu Xu would very much be willing to have a chit chat with this cute young lady. But Evan's presence reminded him that he was not supposed to understand English at the moment. Thus, he shook his head politely, showing that he could not understand English. Coral was disappointed, 
as the language barrier made it almost impossible to communicate with Lu Xu. Besides, there were no offline translation softwares on her phone either. At the same time, Evan was holding a grudge. Although he had wanted to help before Lu Xu took action and everyone had played a part earlier, Lu Xu was the only person in the group that had caught Coral's attention. Thus, Lu Xu became the hero who led others in the man-saving mission. Consequently, he was the only person that Coral was grateful towards. Evan eyed Coral, who was dressed in a fitted training suit with intentional adjustment at her waist. She looked slender, but definitely not weak. Her suit was partially unbuttoned, revealing her sports bra from Lu Xu's angle. Since he had already pretended to be an English noob, he should go with it. Disappointed, Coral whispered in English, I wanted to return your kindness. I can give you money if you want after we go out. Lu Xu replied in fluent English, I can tell you my account number. You may want to note it down. Evan? Coral? From Evan Walsh's distress, plus 666. From Coral Johnson's distress, plus 666. From Meng Jingchan. Everyone present had thought that Lu Xu could not understand English. But it turned out that it was only because they did not mention money. Sensing the uneasy stares, Lu Xu tried to justify himself, actually, I can be able to speak English. Evan almost choked. You either can speak or cannot, what do you mean by can be able to? From Evan Walsh's distress, plus 666. To Lu Xu, attractive faces and seductive bodies were never as alluring as money. In fact, the latter part of Coral's sentence was, she was willing to give it a try with Lu Xu, if she was what he wanted. The girl was deeply moved by Lu Xu's heroic actions earlier, and she thought it was something like love at first sight. However, the sentence was clogged up in her throat. Chapter 407, The Deities Everyone was having difficulty getting their head around the situation. Lu Xu's performance today was totally beyond their expectation. First off, the all-time slacker suddenly became a proactive hero, and then, he acquired the ability to speak English all of a sudden. They recalled their past interactions with Lu Xu. Indeed, he had repeatedly acted dumb. Given his talented acting skills, what was he doing in the remains? Hollywood would be a more suitable place. Coral took a careful approach, then, how much do you think is appropriate? Lu Xu deliberated for a long moment. Actually, his main target was the gargoyles, and saving lives was only incidental. Thus, it would not be nice of him to quote a high price, but he would feel sorry if it was too low. Therefore, he replied cleverly, up to you. Coral's eyes lit up at the answer. Her eyes were shining, like a sea glimmering in the sunlight. To her, it was not actually money that Lu Xu wanted. If it was, he would have thrown a huge sum at her directly. Thus, she thought he was only using it as an opportunity to admit his English abilities, thus making it more convenient to communicate with herself. In the meantime, however, Lu Xu was pondering whether to make her produce an IOU immediately, just like what Chen Zuan did. But the sincerity in Coral's eyes convinced him otherwise. Since she brought up the idea herself, she should be trustworthy, right? When other people were resting at the campsite, Lu Xu sat on a black stone, arranging his train of thoughts of the current discoveries regarding the remain. Firstly, there was a uniform distribution of spirit qi, rendering it impossible to locate the core region. Secondly, the howling would launch indiscriminate attacks at night. And thirdly, gargoyles would become less alert after sunset. Lu Xu had suspected the Black Rocks to be another possible snack for the Divine Water, but reality showed otherwise. Although the water was able to corrode Black Rocks, it would not increase in size. Lu Xu speculated it was due to the absence of the Black Smoke. Just when Lu Xu was in deep thought, Coral took a seat beside him. The rock was big enough to accommodate two people. Upon closer inspection, the girl indeed had a pretty face and an attractive build. A youthful lady in her early twenties, Coral was enjoying the prime time of her life. 
both cultivation and power awakening had effects on postponing the onset of aging. Thus, she would have no issues in staying young and beautiful for a few more decades. There were already posts on the Golden Foundation centered on practitioners and metahuman's longevity. It was a serious research project with data gleaned from volunteers of both types, and had reached a bold conclusion that experts of Class B and above could well live beyond 180 years. Currently, they had insufficient samples to research on Class A's. Lu Xu gave it careful consideration. Truly, the old man seemed increasingly younger ever since the restoration of his foundation. Actually, as someone who had lived for almost as long as a century, Li Xianyi looked only about 60 years old. Who knew if he would become even younger in the future? What the heck? Maybe they would get to see a new version of the old man in his 40s or 50s. Coral smiled at Lu Xu, a more formal self-introduction, I am Coral Johnson from Sweden, a class D metahuman. I have awoken to the titan bloodline of the deities, but we can only find out our true powers after ascension to class B. I thus, you can take me as an ordinary strength type metahuman, though we are slightly weaker. Just slightly. In Sweden, 80% of the Swedish population were also English speakers. Hence, it was completely normal that Coral was fluent in English. But it took Lushu a long while to digest the concept of the deities and the Titan bloodline. Were they not from the Scandinavian myth? And the ruler of deities was Odin. In October 2010, there was a new movie trailer for Thor, who was the god of thunder in Scandinavian mythology. According to them, Titans were the most primary form of life, from whom the deities were born. However, at the same time, Titans were the deity's biggest enemy, and a battle between the two eventually culminated in the end of the Era of Gods. It was said that Titan blood flowed in every deity's veins. Therefore, Coral's outstanding physical strength and aptitude could probably be attributed to her awakening of the bloodline. As for which deity she had inherited the power from, it had to wait until she reached Class B. Following the same vein, then was it true that Northern Europe was currently teeming with strength-type metahumans? It seemed that the deities were most active in Norway, Sweden, Denmark and Netherlands, but information about metahumans in other parts of Europe was rather restricted. Coral smiled, I didn't manage to catch your name and where you are from. Now's your turn. Lu Xu hesitated. He had never encountered anyone as proactive as Coral, I'm Lu Mu, from China. Strength type, Class E. Coral seemed to have expected better of him. It sounded hard to believe that a group of Class Ds being chased around by gargoyles were actually saved by a Class E. Now looking back, Lu Xu's speed was not incredibly fast. But he seemed to have the capability of creating legends. Many male practitioners were paying attention to Coral for her heavenly appearance. Hearing Lu Xu admit his Class E abilities, they thought Coral would give up her pursuit of a Class E rookie. Although admittedly, Lu Xu's movement just now was pretty awesome, the fact that he was only a Class E could not be changed. Most metahumans had speculated that their elemental powers could easily inflict harm on Lu Xu, whose magical defense was weak, despite their minimal damage to the gargoyles. Instead of stronger, they thought Lu Xu's strength was simply more suitable given the unique conditions here. However, to their astonishment, Coral could not care less about Lu Xu's level of capabilities. In her opinion, in spite of her higher level, she could not have done the same as Lu Xu earlier, be it due to the fear of gargoyles or the lack of skills. Thus, she was still impressed. Others despised Lu Xu for his abilities, but Coral thought otherwise. It was precisely his low-level yet skillful movement that made him all the more powerful. Coral turned to gaze at Lu Xu's side profile, admiration swelling up in her eyes. She took the initiative, Lu Mu, could you teach me Chinese? Lu Xu mused for two seconds, two hundred dollars per lesson. Coral? From Coral Johnson's distress, plus two hundred. Chapter 408, Innocent Trade Sometimes, to get the man or woman of your dreams, borrowing things worked better than direct confessions. You would need to return what you borrowed, and then you could treat them to a meal in the name of thanking them. 
In this way, you would become more familiar with each other via more interactions. In fact, Coral was just trying to get close to Lu Xu by using Chinese lessons as an excuse. But never had she expected Lu Xu's actual response. I don't have cash with me now. Can I give it to you altogether after we get out? Coral hesitated. Lu Xu was stunned by her persistence. Wait a minute, 200 yuan was only the standard tuition fee in China, but Coral used Swedish crown, not RMB. He could vaguely recall that 1 yuan was equal to around 1.2 crown. Not a good deal. Lu Xu attracted startled stares. Other members of the team realized that they had yet to discover how cheeky he could get. When a pretty girl asked you for Chinese lessons, you should agree at once and seize the opportunity to develop your relationship. Why the mention of money? Just when everyone was dumbfounded, Lu Xu suddenly added, 200 euros, not crowns. From Coral Johnson's distress, plus 200. Feeling wronged, Coral bit her lips. No one had ever treated her this way. Honestly speaking, Lu Xu's image in her heart had become all the more appealing as he made such an open request without falling head over heels for her beauty. Unlike those superficial boys out there, he was a rarity. Thus, she sank even deeper. In the past, she remained the center of attention wherever she was. Some practitioners even used to fight for her. But she felt that fate had its own way, as she had politely declined all her flattering pursuers but fell in love with one who couldn't care less about her appearance. Just when she was zoning out, Lu Xu said, let's not time our lessons. We'll take it as two lessons per day. After we go out, remember to transfer money to me using the card number I gave you just now. Evan's anger and dissatisfaction was building up. Why? Did you think you were a private tutor in the remains? From Evan Walsh's distress, plus 666. Emily, come here. I want to have a word with you, suppressing his exasperation, Evan called Emily away again. Those around showed an expression of understanding. After all, Evan was still so powerful and Emily had no reason to reject his request. The unnecessary attention drawn to their conversation made Coral uncomfortable. Thus, she jumped off the stone. Follow me, Lu Mu. Lu Xu froze for a long while. Don't do this. I can teach you but I don't do dirty. The onlookers were all startled. No one anticipated Coral to be so direct, and Lu Xu's rejection was even more unexpected. Ten minutes later, when Coral saw Emily after returning with Evan, she finally realized what the misunderstanding she had caused was. As a result, she was too shy to talk to Lu Xu anymore, her cheeks were as red as roses. Indeed, she took some initiative, but never had she intended to get so hasty. It was, that Evan's fault. If not, why would people overthink when she wanted to have some time alone with Lu Xu? The team hit the road again in the afternoon after a long rest. On the way, Evan seized the opportunity to strike a conversation with Coral. You. Before he could continue with his sentence, Coral turned away and walked to Lu Xu's side with a frosty face. Evan was stunned. Did Lu Xu speak ill of him? It must be. From Evan Walsh's distress, plus 166. Attached at the rear of the team, Meng Jingchan watched Lu Xu and Coral walking side by side. At this moment, she knew very well that her chances of convincing Lu Xu were low. Earlier, she had thought of pulling him in with her beauty, but it seemed that he would not fall for such tricks. Even Coral, who was way prettier than Meng Jingchan now, failed to gain Lu Xu's interest. However, Meng Jingchan was still wondering where on earth he was from. Could it be the mysterious heavenly network? Suddenly, Coral asked Lu Xu, are you really an unaffiliated practitioner? She had seen such people in Europe, and was aware of the pitiful plight they were in. Furthermore, organization legacies could make a huge difference to one's cultivation, and powerful associations enjoyed much prestige for things beyond their leading practitioners. In fact, 
they were either blessed with systematic training methods or time-honored legacies, which were not solely restricted to the few famous civilizations. Besides, legacies ensured the steady production of new potential members and more breakthrough opportunities for the experts, given their seniors' prior experience. Thus, it was merely wishful thinking to run an organization with only one pro. Without legacies, the overall abilities of the team would be greatly compromised, weakening members' loyalty to the group. Even Phoenix Society had to put in vigorous efforts in improving their members' awakening possibilities. That was their strength. Despite her mundane capabilities, Coral was well known in the deities, as her father occupied a high position in the group. Social standing determined one's field of vision. Recounting Lu Xu's series of actions, Coral found it hard to believe that he was indeed an independent practitioner. In other words, those people were having a really hard time and it was nearly impossible to produce any remarkable figures, excluding those of awakening friendly aptitude. Without any hesitation, Lu Xu replied, Yes, of course. A thought suddenly crossed his mind. Humph, Coral, I remember that you mentioned about repaying me earlier. How much was it again? Coral smiled. How about 500 million euros? I am still an undergraduate and my monthly pocket money is only this much. SSS. Lu Xu drew a startled breath, she is so damn rich. Currently, the currency exchange rate from euro to RMB remained high. He would earn a great deal in any case. Moreover, 500 million euros was only considered pocket money for her. Hence, the financial capabilities of her family must be unimaginable. Compared to the rich beauty Coral, even Chen Zuan was a poor guy. Lu Xu mused for a few seconds. Please be safe in the remains, Coral. I don't want anything to happen to you. A glint of surprise flashed across Coral's eyes. Okay. Thank you for your concern. To her, it was a promising start to their relationship. But to Lu Xu, he merely felt sorry if such a huge source of money died in the remains. Chapter 409 The International Blacklist Candidate, Li Yixiao Just when Lu Xu was talking to Coral, a dense crowd of gargoyles suddenly rose from the horizon. They covered half of the sky, totaling as many as hundreds. Everyone was seized with terror. Were gargoyles starting to hunt? Judging from their number, even Class Bs might experience difficulty fighting them off. There were simply too many of them. Seeing the gargoyles screeching below the clouds, their faces turned ashen. What should we do? They wished they could dig a hole to hide, pretending to be dead. The view was hellish. Lu Xu frowned at the naughty situation. Even he would rather not confront such a big horde of gargoyles. He would need that old man's support. But, upon a second look, they suddenly realized that the gargoyles seemed to be in pursuit of someone. Coming from afar, the plump build was prancing about on the rocky ground, approaching at an incredible speed considering his body shape. It was already giving Lu Xu creeps. Wasn't that the god-damned Li Xiao? Heavenly Kingly, how did you attract so many monsters? Did you bomb their base or something? What are you waiting for? Run. Evan shouted at the top of his lungs. Just a while ago, they were praying that the gargoyles were not aimed at them. In any case, gargoyle's speed was comparable to that of a class D strength type metahuman. Had the monsters really been coming in their direction, they would never be able to escape. Moreover, more gargoyles would certainly be triggered by their flustered retreat. A key to survival in this remains was never to take chances. Thus, withdrawal in a disordered manner would not be ideal. Clearly, though, Li Ishia was coming their way. Equally clear, his speed was unimaginable. Before anyone could react, he had already closed half the distance between them. As far as Meng Jingchan could recall, did he not claim to be a class D strength type metahuman when they first met? But based on his speed, he was certainly way faster than a class D. On his way here, more gargoyles were awoken. 
Lu Xu found it hard to understand his intentions, are you trying to release all the monsters in the remains at one go? Lu Xu's face darkened at once. Until then, he had finally understood how Li Ixiao ended up becoming the target of public hatred after the Lao's remains, and even the Golden Foundation no longer favored him. He was giving everybody hell, including himself. Just when he was thought to be fleeing for his life, Li Ixiao waved at Lu Xu elatedly. Lu Xu. Look. What a view. Lu Xu. Evan. Coral. Was it the right time to discuss about views? Shouldn't you be running for your life? On second thoughts, it was understandable though. Given Li Xiao's abilities, only other people might suffer from his prank, as the gargoyles would not even be able to catch him. Coral was still trying to gather her thoughts. Do you know him, Lu Mu? Wait, you are Lu Xu, aren't you? Not Lu Mu. Despite not knowing how to write Chinese characters, Coral could tell the difference in pronunciation. Lu Xu nodded, his expression inexplicable. Honestly speaking, he would be more than willing to deny his knowing of that fellow. But how could he do that when Li Yixiao called his name? However, Lu Xu had no idea that Coral actually knew Li Yixiao. Due to the havoc he wreaked at Laos, his information had long since been sold as a product on the Darkness Kingdom. Furthermore, as one of the most special individuals in the small pool of Class B cultivation pros, how could Coral, the daughter of a superior in the deities, not have seen his photos and other materials? Following the same thought, the young man was from the Heavenly Network, Coral had already deduced the truth. Besides, Li Yixiao's appearance cast doubts on the credibility of Lu Xu's Class E strength type capabilities. How could a Class B expert be possibly so close to a Class E? The boy on her mind was actually rather powerful. Immediately Lu Xu threw Coral onto his shoulder and ran off. Other people's safety was none of his business, but Coral could not die. As a peak Class D, Coral always turned other people down without fail when they proposed to help. She did not think she needed any help, and despised those who cared for her solely out of their interest in her beauty. But now, being carried by Lu Xu felt like something that could only happen in her sweetest dreams. Others also took to their heels following Lu Xu. No one would be willing to become the gargoyle's next meal. Soon, however, they realized that Li Ixiao was after Lu Xu. As he ran, the fatty shouted in an excited voice, Lu Xu. Quickly take a photo for me. Insane. Who would take a bloody photo for you now? Lu Xu was clear, though, Li Ixiao was so calm precisely because he was confident about his own abilities, and would not feel guilty for involving others who were not from the Heavenly Network anyway. Remaining silent, Lu Xu kept on running for a while. If it were someone else, he would certainly urge the pursuer to choose another path. But knowing Li Xiao, Lu Xu knew nothing would change his mind. Thus, he took out his phone at once, switched it on, turned to take a photo of Li Xiao, and shouted back, We'll send it to you once we get back. Everyone was shocked. Bro, did you just stop to take a picture for him for real? I, satisfied, Li Xiao swerved to the left. He couldn't care less of who was there, but whoever in his way would be doomed. The rest slowly came to a stop, gazing into the direction Li Xiao had disappeared into with distress displayed on their faces. Together with him, throngs of gargoyles were gone as well. So, they thought to themselves, you came just for a single photo? More surprisingly, Lu Xu did take the photo. Was it bloody scripted? But what they did not know was that Li Xiao was genuinely happy. Last time in the Lao's remains, no one was willing to be his photographer. Thus, meeting Lu Xu here almost felt like a reunion with his bestie. Truth be told, though, few could run faster than Li Xiao in the entire remains. Lu Xu put Coral down. Staring at the horizon as the gargoyles disappeared from his sight, Lu Xu decided that the next time he entered remains with Li Xiao, he had to remind him that they must pretend to be strangers inside. Chapter 410, Li Xiao's Backers After Li Xiao was gone, they could finally rest assured of their safety. 
However, following the panic, a few shocked stares were immediately drawn to Lu Xu. Many of them had no idea of the fat man's abilities, as most individual practitioners had only heard of Li Yixiao's name but never seen his face. Moreover, either did they have the access to such knowledge, nor could they afford the information of Li Yixiao on the Darkness Kingdom. Even if they could, there was no need to waste the money. Even so, his remarkable capabilities were apparent judging from his speed and composure when being pursued by a huge crowd of monsters. Didn't you see that madman stop to wait for the gargoyles? When others were scared of those monsters, that fatty was unhappy that they were too slow. What if Lu Xu was not there? The thought made everyone shudder. Undoubtedly, the fatty would speed past them, leaving the gargoyles to attack the weak. Consequently, none of them would survive the slaughter. What a bloody tragedy. They were starting to feel sorry for those who happened to cross their way with the fatty. Speaking of which, being an expert as you are, why could you not just do it yourself but had to drag other people in? In fact, Li Ishiao did so just for the fun of it. Just a while ago, he had a fight with a Class B expert from the Phoenix Society. In the end, he stood unharmed while the other guy, seriously wounded, escaped on his last breath. However, they had unintentionally triggered too many gargoyles in the process. He could not fight them all. In the remains this time, any ordinary Class B expert would be exhausted to death in the face of so many gargoyles in the absence of Li Xieni. Only warriors like Li Xiao with excellent defense, HP and ATK stood a chance at survival. At this moment, an idea popped up in Li Yixiao's brains. Why did he fail to get the relic the last time in the Lao's remains? Because he was attacked by too many experts at the same time. But it was different this time. With hundreds of gargoyles behind his back, whoever his rivals were, they had to reconsider their chances against the horde of gargoyles. Suddenly, Li Yixiao felt that he had found his backers, who would even beat him, though. There was the downside, of course, that he could never stop running. But that was none of his concern. He had sent countless people to their graves on his way, despite painting a target on his back for many class Bs. In the cultivation world, the name, Heavenly King, was a synonym to a prose of the East, and some radicals even planned to kill Heavenly Kings of the Heavenly Network to boost their reputation. As a result of the hard-earned influence achieved by the Heavenly Network, the status of the Heavenly King was already able to inspire awe, even if the person's name was less well known. However, just when they were about to take action, they were deterred by those gargoyles behind him. Gargoyles could not differentiate friends from foes, and not all Class Bs could survive their attack like Li Yixiao. It was a useful technique against all potential assailants. Their only hope now was that the fellow would not bring thousands of gargoyles over to give everyone hell in the competition for the relic. At this moment, Lu Xu's heart was in pain. Freak you, Li Yixiao. It suddenly reminded him that Li Yixiao had probably cleared each and every gargoyle in the entire region. They were precious food for his divine water. Lu Xu could hardly breathe upon realizing this painful fact. He decided to change his direction in search of any gargoyle survivors. However, he finally noticed the uneasy stares from others, especially Evan. At the start, he was labeled as an unaffiliated rookie practitioner, who was later revealed to have some impressive moves. But now, people's impression of him had shaken. Could he be an expert who had been acting dumb? Other people had brains too. Why was that Class B looking expert so close to Lu Xu? And how could a Class E possibly be friends with a Class B? In the individual practitioner's opinion, it was totally impossible. The world was very realistic. In the beginning, everyone perceived himself as the center of the world, too good for any organization as they believed they could rise high by themselves alone. Nonetheless, the truth was, talents did exist and the reality was far from fair. When people became aware of that, it was already too late to join the more powerful organizations. In the past, organizations needed to absorb new members for growth, offering individual practitioners loads of selection power. 
but when that era was over, the power was transitioned to the organizations themselves. A common misconception was that larger associations were more powerful. However, those experienced in management knew the truth, which stated that holistic competence was far more important, including ideologies and unity. Only members of a bonded team would support one another in times of adversity. Meanwhile, Lu Xu's image had become indefinitely tall. Only then did they realize that Lu Xu had the guts to pull out a gargoyle from a horde of 20-plus monsters, because he had the abilities to do so. Evan was the most astounded among all. As a member from the Phoenix Society, he certainly had read about Li Xiao. After a long moment of hesitation, he asked, how do you know the heavenly king of China? It was a stupid question the second he spat it out. Apparently, Lu Xu was from the heavenly network as well. He used to think that he was the strongest in the team, but it was known that the heavenly network would only send the cream of the elites such as Li Xiao to the remains. Thus, how powerful was Lu Xu, really? It struck him like a thunderbolt as he recalled how he had bragged about in front of Lu Xu. What was most unacceptable was that Emily was already casting stares of admiration to Lu Xu. But Evan knew very well that she did not have a chance, as even the stunner Coral was rejected by Lu Xu. Evan was even certain that Coral was one of the prettiest girls he had ever seen. Moreover, as a young lady in her early twenties, Coral was youthful and a bit sexy at the same time. Rich and attractive, with a pair of long legs. No man could probably refuse a girl like Coral, except Lu Xu, thought Evan. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens